what is happening with lifespan it's correct that people are living longer life but the quality of life when they turn older is getting from bad to worse and we know what has happened if you just look at markets like japan or europe where the burden on the health system because of the aging population has become so much more so actually the longer life span with poor quality of life is actually going to be the ticking time bomb which will destroy economies which is already happening in a lot of the western world so when we think of longevity we cannot just think of longer life but we need to think of quality of life hey hi this is mustafa inamda science communicator at longevity india the goal of longevity india is to explain the science behind healthy aging so that you can use it and be healthier for that i interview researchers to understand the science behind aging doctors to understand the real world application of aging research and also economists to understand the social aspects related to aging this platform is free and available on most of the channels like youtube spotify and apple podcast Longevity India is sponsored by Decode Age, India's first longevity research company which provides longevity supplements and tests. If you want to work on your health, then Decode Age is a good starting point as they provide gut microbiome test and also biological age test with the help of which you can figure out what exactly you have to do to optimize your biology. But before starting anything, I urge you to understand the science behind it. and that is what we at longevity india are trying to do making science of being healthy simple so yeah let's continue with this amazing episode i hope you find it insightful so hi vishal how are you hi mustafa great to meet you yeah great to meet you too welcome to longevity india podcast and today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic that how increasing life span is going to affect the healthcare insurance industry but before going into that i was very cu- curious when i was doing your research you know you had this amazing uh, startup in gaming industry and you are a successful entrepreneur and then you switched to this healthcare industry so how this transition happened so actually interestingly i don't believe it's a transition i still believe i'm making a game uh, and i think they say that life is the ultimate game uh and you know we are the ultimate players of this game of life the only difference is unlike a video game where you have multiple lives or god mode as you know in the real world you only have one life so i think in my case uh, when i started my company uh, i was very young i was only 16 but uh, uh being a gamer you end up you know having a lot of unhealthy lifestyle you know your your diet this becomes pizza and pepsi and all of that so while in college i was a national level volleyball player uh while i was running my gaming company i jokingly say i became a volleyball myself and uh, i was extremely unhealthy and that's when i tried to make health changes and i figured out that it is really difficult to do it because of you know multiple things and that's when i realized that what is missing in the world of health is the core ingredient of motivation so i think the challenge what people think is that health is a information or access problem they say i'll connect you to the best doctor or i'll give you this new supplement but the reality is it is not about access it is about not having the right motivation and, and let me just give you an example uh everybody knows they should not be smoking in fact the cigarette pack has it written big with a photograph but people still smoke similarly people know they should not be drinking too heavily or not be eating junk food they already know it but they still do it not because of lack of information or lack of access it's lack of motivation and that is the fundamental problem in the world of health that incentives are misaligned firstly and the consumer is been told that a pill can solve your problem which it can't 
and they do unhealthy behavior thinking that one pill will control my blood sugar or one pill will control my blood pressure but that is not the case which is what leads to compounding of these problems so how do you keep them motivated so that's the whole idea right so i think motivation is a science uh, and uh, in fact uh, if you see we we talk about who is our competition so a lot of times people are asking me that who is your competition and i jokingly tell them that when we talk to our users asking them that what do you do if you don't use goki or if you stop using goki their answer is they're not doing anything it is not like they are shifting to another app or another service they are getting lazy and that is what they say i'm getting lazy and when we probe deeper that what is making you lazy it is platforms like netflix youtube instagram amazon prime so what is happening is that at one end we are telling you eat healthy on the second end zomato and swiggy are sending you notification pizza ke sath burger free so you are already having a lot of health challenges and then you get this notification of this amazing offer which you want to immediately redeem or netflix uh, we all know sleep is the foundation of good health there is enough literature enough studies around sleep in fact one of the core uh, longevity tool is deep sleep but netflix has openly declared that their competition is sleep if you read netflix ceo's interview so netflix this billions of billion dollar company is basically investing in content and technology so that you can't sleep so imagine you are this individual who is trying to be healthy your coach or whichever book you read or website you go to tells you eat healthy sleep and be active netflix is not letting you sleep apps food apps are not letting you eat healthy and then there is the social media which is making you lazy which is not encouraging you to go out walk or meet your friends they want you to be in your couch surfing your endless uh streams of content so the fundamental challenge is technology has been weaponized to make you lazy hmm. but don't you find challenging to sell a vitamin rather than a painkiller so that's exactly the point right the point is that everybody wants instant gratification we are living in this world of instant gratification and the painkiller promises you the instant gratification but unfortunately in health that is not the case especially when you are suffering from non communicable diseases like diabetes blood pressure uh, heart disease kidney issues all the lifestyle related diseases don't have a pill which can solve the problem the pill can subside the symptom and people take that subsiding of the symptom as the problem is solved and then they continue to do the unhealthy behavior and then one fine day they get a stroke they get a heart attack they get a kidney failure and then they realize oh my god it is too late so instant gratification is the fundamental problem in the world and in healthcare it's even worse all right so as you mentioned in the beginning also that life is a game and when i used to play a game there used to be a bar and as it it used to get red it means i used i'm about to die now over the years that bar is getting increased the average life expectancy is getting increased in 1950s it was 35 40 years old now it is 70 and over the period of time when i will be at that age it will be 90 100 so why this is happening vishal so again the life so so it's it's interesting right so i believe that you gave a very good example that in a game there is your life and the life becomes red green but the metric is your life unfortunately if you look at what is the metric of health or what is the metric for a country the metric is gdp they say gdp growth then they say healthcare expenditure to gdp growth they are not trying to they are saying that by spending more on health i am actually doing good for you but actually that is not the case a metric 
should be healthy lifespan. So I think fundamentally the metric itself is wrong when we look at measuring of health itself. Now coming back to your question on what is happening with lifespan, it's correct that people are living longer life, but the quality of life when they turn older is getting from bad to worse. People are now getting hip replacements, knee replacements, and we know the gyratric population is going through so many challenges, kidney failures, dialysis, and we know what has happened. If you just look at markets like Japan or Europe, where the burden on the health system because of the aging population has become so much more. So actually, the longer lifespan with poor quality of life is actually going to be the ticking time bomb which will destroy economies, which is already happening in a lot of the Western world. So when we think of longevity, we cannot just think of longer life, but we need to think of quality of life that is equally important when it comes to lifespan yeah so i was having this podcast with dr shaker he's a scientist from indian institute of population and he also explained that by 2060 the amount of elderly in india is going to replicate and that is going to bring a huge economic challenge in front of india and uh, you know, connected to that, I have this question that, you know, the way healthcare insurance works, right, it, it works on probability. There are 100 people and they take uh, uh, what you call premium from them. And if one of one uh, gets sick, then they give that money to that particular individual after getting profit and everything. But as age increases, the chances of getting chronic diseases uh, increases and then the premiums become expensive. Now this situation that at older age you have a expensive premium and at older age you are not earning. The, so that is creating a difficult situation. So how do you see it? So like I told you, healthcare is going to be a very big challenge in a country like India where we are going to have such a huge population which is going to be elderly in the next 10, 20, 30 years. I think the, the fundamental problem is, and again, let me go back to the mindset. Let's imagine that there is a highway which has a lot of accidents, a lot of car accidents. Uh, the government comes back and says, you know, we have a solution to avoid these accidents. We are going to set up more garages and more mechanics around the highway. And that is what is done that absolutely does not reduce that. In fact, the accidents increase because now there are all these garages who are competing for, you know, more people to come. And, you know, in fact, some of them are even putting potholes and other things on the road to make sure more accidents happen so that more people go to these garages. However, the way to make lesser accidents is a by making sure people drive in a disciplined way, people wear seat belts, speed limit is maintained, the roads are maintained, proper lane discipline is maintained. So the only way to make you a safe driver is going to solve the problem of accidents on the road and have better infrastructure, which is the better roads and better infrastructure overall. That is not happening in the world of healthcare. We have this challenge of diabetes population, heart care, you know, heart attacks. Every day you hear of young people now dying with heart attacks. But the solution people are thinking is we will have more hospitals, we will have more trained nurses, and we'll have more doctors. Of course, they are needed. But this, that is the mechanics and the uh, and the garages where you are going to go. For you to drive and be healthy we need you to adopt the healthy lifestyle. So in fact, I'm happy that India actually has Ministry of Ayush, which talks about so the entire, you know, the Ayush system of yoga and all of that is holistic. Yoga, uh, and if you go to Ayurveda and even traditional Chinese medicine, they always look at it from a lifestyle perspective. They say for you to fix your, your food, your, your gut needs to get fixed and your gut needs to be get fixed because that is where all the bacteria and all that is, right? And by popping pills, which are antacid, you are only damaging the gut bacteria. While 
others are saying are you have a problem eat have antacid so i think the problem is that these two uh, these two wings of science are colliding with each other right now and one is offering you instant gratification and one is offering you long term <laughs> a uh, gratification and long term gratification is difficult for most people to adopt so what can be the solution so that people will uh, you know focus on holistic approach rather than instant popping pill so so like i said that first of all this is a problem of motivation so we need to figure out what motivates people to make changes and if you look at and by the way we call this entire aspect of data motivation mining so we need to figure out what motivates you what motivates me or what motivates something else to make a move and interestingly as humans it's not like there are 20 things which motivate us right sabke liye the basic motivation levers are the same and they are all uh, they are all connected to the four or five chemicals which is endorphins dopamine oxytocin serotonin cortisol so finally we are all the same at uh, as far as that level is concerned so when facebook why is facebook or instagram so addictive because every time you click the like button that gives you dopamine every time you are chatting with your friend in a whatsapp group that is actually giving you the equivalent of oxytocin and then there is giving you you know all these challenges are giving you serotonin so the point is that all the social media platforms are using behavior modification tools for their benefit which is advertising so they are doing all of this so that you click on an ad what we are doing is the exact opposite we are saying that we will make you walk which will give you the endorphins but once you walk you will get rewarded to meet your health goal so the fundamental challenge is the business model of a lot of these companies it is said that platforms like facebook and instagram from your behavior can figure out if you are depression if you are depressive however when they know this they are not telling you that hey go and seek help they are still showing you the image of your friend enjoying their holiday in mauritius or maldives which is making you even more depressed so because their their fundamental problem is that they want you to click on ads which is what gives them their revenue which is why alignment of business model so for example in the case of goki our business model is in complete alignment with our users benefit so we only make money with the user paying us and we only make money if they retain with us which means they need to get a benefit to be remaining on our platform we are not making money from advertising or anything else so the minute the incentives are similar that changes the game and that's where the insurance company comes in now now let's think of the insurance company you just mentioned the insurance company model of collecting premiums and paying claims and their problem is that when actuarial tables were designed the population was very different and the population was also not that migratory what has now happened in india is everybody has migrated you know the population of mumbai or bangalore or delhi you know now versus 10 20 30 years back is very different secondly the healthcare issues have become different people are aging so now suddenly their actuarial models do not work and it is becoming more and more challenging for them to manage this which is why insurance premiums are increasing because finally somebody has to pay for it so when we came back with the insurance company we said listen your goal is the person should be hopefully becoming healthier which means claim less and our goal is that whoever is becoming healthy should be rewarded with a cheaper insurance plan so now here is a marriage of both the business models where insurance companies benefit is they want you to live longer so that you can pay premium for a much longer time but also not have those expensive claims which completely erodes their business and in our case we want you to continue living healthy and get protection so our uh, our philosophy is we call it guide motivate and empower so we 
first guide you to make healthy changes we then motivate you by have our coaches by doctors by providing you rewards by providing you all kinds of things but finally we empower you with protection so that in case you know still things could go wrong you could still be you, know, you could still fall sick then there is an insurance cover on top so insurance cover cannot be it is an insurance means it is designed for a unforeseen event it is not designed for something which is a imminent event and unfortunately hamare ya i can tell you at the rate at which people are consuming junk food diabetes every second person is going to be diabetic in this country given that the rate at which we are consuming all the unhealthy junk food suddenly we have uh, apps which are delivering food to you in 10 minutes you don't even go out to walk pehle we used to go out to get at least groceries you know or, or even bread or something you normally would go to your neighborhood and get it now the people are wanting everything be to be delivered in their house in 10 minutes so it is making you more lazier which is the fundamental problem so as far as am i able to understand the goki model like uh, suppose there is your customer which uses all the services of goki and you have the his database uh, which represents that he is healthy he is in a healthier state and that uh, you then collaborate with healthcare insurance company and they figure out that this so we have made it into a game so goki is the game of life you are a player now once you enter a game of life how do you win this game so the metric is your goki age so as you become healthier your age starts reducing and we actually show your avatar who is getting younger so longevity is so embedded into goki's dna that we show the goki age to every user if you go open the goki app for example uh, like i'll i'll be opening you and showing you my app you will uh, you will be seeing my goki age coming up and it shows you right and not just for me for every goki user it will show right on the front screen what is your biological age and what is your goki age and normally it always starts the other way around your biological age is 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 uh, is is a lower and your goki age is higher because most people are because they are unhealthy so they technically even though they may be 30 years old their goki age will be 35 so you are actually older than your age but then what we do is as people start making uh, the the healthcare their lifestyle changes that's when their age starts reducing and as your age starts reducing you level up so you start so we have a leveling system called safe sedentary active fit elite so you start at the base level being sedentary but the minute you upgrade so uh, so the minute you upgrade to that you go to fit then you become active and then you become elite and this leveling system so if you see the goki age here uh, you can see here my age the leveling system is connected to my avatar mm. itself so here you are able to actually see my goki age so it shows you my biological age uh, it shows you my biological age it shows you my my real age in, in this case my biological age is 46 but goki age is 41 so i'm technically 5 years younger looking than my own age and then it shows you my level so i am elite for 700 days and then it also connects this to my insurance plan so there is a insurance plan right at the top and it shows you my insurance coverage but the best part is we have a community so you can see other goki users just like a game you can see other users who are in what level and you will see you can make them friends you can add them in your group you can create challenges so there is an entire social aspect to gaming on this yeah. which we have built in brought game into reality and you know the in the best way possible Ab- absolutely which is why i say right longevity is actually the best metric for somebody because life is a metric in a game whenever you play a game you always say are i have how many lives in a game uh, whether you play black man or any game and then if you remember we are always are trying to say how do we get to god mode so that we don't die unfortunately we can't give you god mode in real world but we can give you the goki mode and in the goki mode the best part is once people get into this game 
they get addicted to the game. So instead of we wanting you to get addicted to playing Candy Crush or some useless game, we want you to be addicted to playing the game of life where you win by being healthier and you get rewarded by your insurance company, by your bank. We work with banks who reward you. So banks will give you their reward points. We work with all the health food companies and supplement companies who then give you discounts and deals on all these supplements and products. We work with experiences who will say, I'm going to give you cheaper this. So it becomes a club of healthy people who everybody wants to incentivize. All right. So, you know, when you were explaining uh, Goki age, biological age, real age, I'm, I'm really fascinated by this concept of biological age majorly based on Howarth clock, epigenetic clock, right? So what do you think about that? And the GoQ age that you just mentioned, what are the parameters on which it is based on? So I think it's quite clear that aging, you know, and you know, I'm sure everybody listening to this podcast knows people who, when they see their friends, they look much older than their age. And there are some people who may look younger than their age. And there are some people who may look their age. And for us, it's very common. In fact, one of the compliments you give person is that you are looking very young. So it's actually treated as a compliment always. However, the problem is that we are still not able to comprehend both these aspects of your biological age versus your, let's call your real age. And in the case of Goki, what we have done is we created our own model, which combines various aspects of health. So the foundation is sleep. We start with sleep, then we talk of nutrition, then we talk of activity, then we talk of cognition. We believe cognition is an important aspect of brain and people don't, people think cognition is different, but you need to feed your brain also. So most people, for example, have deficiency in omega-6 because they don't have the right, you know, the, you know, brain food as we say. And then finally, we talk about happiness, which is mindfulness, meditation. So it's a combination of all of this. And then we reward consistency. You can't just say, I will meditate once a month and suddenly I'll become younger or healthier. Health is something you have to practice every day and it needs to become part of your daily habit. Only then you will see the result. So consistency is more important than quantity or quality, actually, I would say. A lot of people give emphasis to quality and quantity. That Aaj maine do ghanta exercise kiya. Or today I did, you know, weights, such heavy weights. So either people are talking of quality, quantity. But even if you walk 15 minutes a day, every day, but you do that for 365 days, that is going to give you more benefit than doing these heavy exercises once in a blue moon. So consistency is main and that has been one of the core elements of our aging platform, which we have created. And the best thing is we have connected this to your insurance underwriting. So now normally insurer, abhi kya kar rahe? they are thinking, oh God, this is person is 35 years old, but already at 35, the person is pre-diabetic, pre-hypertensive, uh, uh, high cholesterol. So they are worried that this person at 35 is showing the, all the signs of a 45 or 50 year old body. But in our case, a 35 year old is showing the sign of a 25 year old body. So you will underwrite me as a 25 year old, not a 35 year old. So uh, are you a fan of biomarkers? Absolutely. In fact, I have been tracking uh, pretty much all my biomarkers for years now. I mean, so I have, you know, data of, uh, you know, what is my cholesterol? What is my HDL, LDL, HPA1C? Uh, so I've been into biohacking from 2012, actually. So it's almost 10 plus years of biohacking for me. And uh, one of the foundations of biohacking is having all your data to be measured and monitored. So which, which is the research that you are looking forward for this biohacking? So, so very frankly, right? I don't think so biohacking is the right word. Uh, in fact, now I think that what we think is biohacking is actually the right way to live. It is suddenly termed as biohacking because if you look at traditional life, there were no geysers. So people used to take bath in normal water or cold water. 
we never had this concept of hot water you know it was only something which was a privilege at at some point of time we suddenly started taking you know all this hot and suddenly we are now talking of cold therapy and cold this and cold that if you look at all our traditional systems they are being presented to back to us packaged as biohacking and all of that longevity if you look at intermittent fasting fasting has been part of all religions you talk of any religion there is some or the other kind of fasting whether it is having ramadan which is again you know it is like a 30 days intermittent fasting or whether you look at the jains who fast you know and they don't eat after sunset and all of that and if you think about it right all these people somehow knew that you had to fast uh, and now suddenly we have all these scientists talking about autophagy and all these things to us which was already embedded in a lot of our culture and a lot of our dna we've been told to eat uh, you know foods which are now non processed we are millets we are talking about you know eat millets you know there were only millets available at some point of time so i think uh, for india specifically i would say that for us biohacking actually is going back to our roots all right so but you know i'll i'll, I'll contradict you there that you know uh, from childhood i was an atheist uh, despite boy being from a religious family and my mother used to ask me to do roza every ramzan and i don't used to do that but now as the science has cleared up things for me that it is actually helpful i do i do fasting uh, like that so that's why i think uh, the research the scientific temper that is coming out explaining this all things is is uh, quite helping and and it's all, it was interesting to talk to you about these topics and let let's end this podcast with a very dramatic question which is do you think humans can be immortal in future and if they how you look to that society so actually you know this question of immortality comes from two very important aspects that are you your body or are you your mind or are you your soul who are who is you itself because let's think about you as a software and hardware now like we know hardware can keep upgrading right you now we started with you know mobile phones which were just you know feature phones now they became smartphones now they have bigger screens smaller screens so similarly when we look at a human body there is the hardware aspect of our body which is the organs and the body parts and so on and we now know that you can replace them you can augment them and i know i was recently at a bionic lab in uh, in berkeley where they are going to you know create superhumans and you know all of that so so there is the hardware aspect of it now comes to the software aspect of it which is your brain you know if you are getting dementia if you are getting those kind of conditions where you are forgetting your memory or you know you have those challenges and then thirdly comes that you know your let's let's put it this way your awareness or your soul or whatever you call it in you know however science has to describe it so there are various ways to think about longevity or immortality one way to think about it is can we make the entire hardware software and the things of powering the software all three things live forever that is one aspect and those are gods or whatever you call them right but the second aspect of immortality is also interesting right that can we somehow back up your your memories and somehow back up your system into a new hardware into a new hardware uh, where uh, you could potentially be still alive but in a different body or a different vessel and then there is the third aspect and there was this very amazing show on amazon prime and there were black mirror episodes of this where they are saying that imagine that they can back all this up and then create a virtual avatar of you and this avatar lives in a virtual world and then you could enter this virtual world and meet your you know your your past your grandparents whoever because they will be living inside this virtual world uh, itself and now with generative ai imagine that 
all my memories and thoughts are backed up and then generative AI algorithm will look at that and start predicting my future behavior based on my intellect and my past. So it is not that I'm just living in that simulation. I could actually be thinking and doing things in that simulation with generative AI now, which, which is the talk. So I think it, it is going to be fascinating. Nobody knows the answer, right? On what is going to happen on this whole journey of immortality. But all I can tell you is that a combination of this may happen. Something will happen. Uh, of course, we will all live longer. But some of us will be living as vegetables or in very poor state of living longer, where we will be on beds, we will require support and you know, there will be uh, all kinds of assistance and you know uh, dialysis and whatever else that there will be one category of people who will be doing that and I, I just hope that people who are listening don't go there and then there will be the other category of people who at the age of 100 will be training for running a marathon you know we know the famous Foja Singh who ran a marathon when he was 100 so I think it is about what you want to do but for you to run a marathon at 800, you need to start preparing today. You cannot at the age of 100 think I will do this because this is going to be a lifestyle change you have to do now at age 20 or at age 30 so that at age 100 you are capable of running a marathon. And finally, I think one aspect which we again missed over here which I thought we should also talk about is about uh, mindfulness. So, so, you know, a lot of people exercise a lot, do all kinds of things, and we suddenly find them, thup, they fall and they are dead. You know, we have seen a lot of examples. That now. is very shocking, right? Yeah. With all the six packs, you die of heart attack. So, what is happening to them? Which is what I keep saying, right? So, it is not about just physical activity or just muscle. It is also about happiness and cognition. A lot of people are basically celebrating not sleeping for them that you know, overnighter is a good thing. So sleep is the most, uh, you know, compromised aspect of life, which is actually the most impactful. In fact, I don't know if you read that sleep is now Olympic athletes instead of taking steroids they sleep. So the data is that if you sleep for 14 hours, that is actually better than having steroids. That is the most natural steroid which you can have to enhance performance is sleep and deep sleep. So that is what Olympic athletes do before your game, you get 14 hours or 16 hours of sleep. So that is how impactful sleep is. And most of the people who are let let me use the word who are like super performers, tend to massively undermine their sleep. The second thing is, uh, I believe that, uh, so, you know, there is the hardware and then there is the processor, which is your mind. So what is happening is that our mind is a very, very tricky thing. It takes data, let's all your memories, all your experiences is the data. That data is processed. And it gives you four things or five things. One is if this data is processed and you think of the past, it will give you jealousy, anger, you know, basically, past is about what happened in your past and that system is designed to give you like negative emotions. And then the same data is processed in the future. And it gives you tension, worry, anxiety, the same data because human brains is supposed to protect you. So it is giving you care. Past mein aisa hua tha, future mein aisa hua tha, be careful of this person or don't do this or this is. So what is happening is we are right now either in the future or in the past. And our brains are like constantly processing all this data and uske upar we are, you know, abusing our bodies. So the brain whose function is actually to, you know, process your body, you're not sleeping enough, you're not giving it enough time to heal the body. And 
most of your time goes either in envy or jealousy and or you know worrying about the future so what actually helps and again uh, they talk a lot about meditation is not about the way the way i define meditation is actually nothing i just say it is like stopping your brain from processing data which is the future or the past if you can just make your brain think of now don't think any past or future just think about now suddenly what is going to happen is all your processing power will be saying kare i have no work so then they'll say okay now let's see what is the other work left so it can go and start repairing your body it can go you know figure out what is the challenge in your body they say that most of the repair and rejuvenation of the body happens in sleep and that too in rem or deep sleep because that is when your body is repairing itself but if you don't go in the deep sleep only or if you don't go in there your body will never get that chance to do it so i think people fundamentally don't understand some of these concepts which is why uh, we are seeing a lot of these cases of people dying untimely deaths which which could have been avoided so i was also you know reading somewhere that uh, the narcissism the narcissistic behavior over the period of time is increasing because of social media and everything and i related it to what you just said that you know you are thinking about past or you are thinking about future because you are you know too much ego is there and do you think that this is uh, this is what it is i mean we are uh, you know too much thinking about ourselves and that is that, that's that's exactly what all that's what i'm saying the problem is that everybody is right now not living in the present mm-hmm. you know and these tools uh i i encourage all of you to see this documentary called the social dilemma uh you know which talks about uh, how social media is being weaponized to influence human behavior right and unfortunately that is what technology has a good side to it but technology also had a bad side to it unfortunately right now we are all suffering from the poor use of technology as we know teenagers are getting addicted to platforms like tiktok or reels uh, we know the problem around you know all the suicides happening and all of that where is all that coming from that's all coming from excessive usage of uh, platforms which are encouraging these kind of behaviors you also talked about sleep and i take sleep seriously so for that what i do is i go in the morning i uh, take a sun bath uh, i avoid coffee post 3 pm and i have my dinner at 6 or 7 pm so other than this any tips for you know good sleep so by the way i i follow pretty much all of what you just said i don't have coffee after 4 pm typically but i think three other things really worked well for me one is i don't even keep my phone in the same room when i am sleeping the phone is in a different location altogether and i don't know why people sleep with their phone next to their bed and use it like an alarm or whatever they say but the problem is that this is the same phone every time they wake up they would f- want to check it and it keeps interrupting you every time so i think uh, and if there is anything urgent you know you can figure out how somebody can contact you in case of urgency but 9 out of 10 times i'll tell you as a quiz, nothing is urgent that they have to call you in the middle of the night right so if you can figure out a way to keep your devices not even in the same room that's good secondly the temperature of the room matters a lot so either you reduce the temperature or don't use any kind of blankets or anything else right because what happens is we are the body temperature is supposed to cool down but it is not happening so the temperature makes a big difference and the third is the lighting in the room A lot of people have too much light in the room. They keep one side light on, or the window is on. So you are supposed to have pitch darkness or as close to darkness in as possible. So that is another very important aspect. And and finally, I also uh, have tried things, you know, like you know, applying you know some kind of oils, oil. But that's okay. But I would say that the three other things which have worked very well for me is uh, technology detox in the night and uh, making sure temperature and uh, all that is controlled. and the light all right thank you vishal for your time i hope the listeners uh, who are listening to this podcast will be motivated for a holistic life and their lives will be changed 
So thank you very much for taking your, your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you on this.